Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview. Everton versus Brentford at Goodison Park. A must-win game for Everton once again as we uh, as we look at those fixtures and and yeah, it's yeah. Oh, we need we really need to win this one, Baz. We do. We need to start getting our home form up. That's for sure. It's a uh, one win at home this season isn't good enough. Um, and this represents a good opportunity. Obviously, we've got we know we've got tough fixtures coming up in December. The two games we've got, the next two home games, are the ones you look at and go, right? Can we get six points from them? Brentford are own Wolves are own, but Brentford are a good side. But they've not won any away game this season. Don't think I think they've got a point away from home this season so far. So mm. the confidence isn't going to be massively blowing away from the G Tech. They're very good at home. I think they took sixteen of eighteen points at home. But away, like I said, none. So this represents an opportunity for Everton to to get a much needed victory and because we are going into a run of games that mm. look really difficult on paper. Yeah, they are such a they are such a uh, Jacqueline Hard side, aren't they? At home they're really, really good. And I think they've only had one draw so far, haven't they? So it's five wins, five defeats and one draw and I mean that shows you what kind of team they are, they go for it. You know, we've seen that for some of the games recently, the high scores in the home games mm -hmm. coming from behind and, um, uh, you know, the, man the manager, so, you know, it's why a lot of Evertonians like the look of him is because he does go for it, he does allow their players to play, but of course, away from home where maybe you have to be a little bit more um, tactically clever, let's say, and, and, and just maybe calm your team down a little bit. That's, that's where they're not getting the joy, so hopefully that does continue on Saturday when we face them because you know as we just said there this this is a game that you look at on paper and before the start of the season and I think we all like Brentford we all appreciate what they've done but you still got to look at them on a, on paper and go these are the teams we have to be beating and um, for as you know for as much as the you know the manager wants to talk us down or or say where we are in the league for us we always feel like we should be doing better and when you look at the I know there's one side will go ah Brentford haven't won away so is Everton sort of thing, mm. but the other side of it, you know, they, they, they've Everton should be trying to work out or should have been working out exactly why they haven't been winning those games and go for those areas. We got to, haven't you? I mean, one thing we've got to be aware of they were winning at United and they were winning at Fulham, but ultimately they lost both of those winning, you have to win the Fulham, so ultimately they lost both of those games. And that's that's what we've got to take heart in is that they haven't got a single point, so there's something not quite the yeah. same away. They were unlucky at City, they win winning at City actually as well. Mm -hmm. So they, they have scored in those away games. Uh, and Everton have got to be, we've got to be wary of that. We've still only won one home game since that night against Crystal Palace mm -hmm. when the opposition have scored. Yeah. But that was Crystal Palace this yeah. season, so we've sort of got that out the way. So these are dangerous in the final third and we know that Wisser and Bumo and Bumo are fit now um, for this one. So... They're gonna be they're gonna be at their strength, you know, their maximum strength in the final third. But it's at home, it's with our crowd, and these are the games we have to target. We've we should be winning more home games than what we do. Yeah. And we have to get back to that. And you have to look at Brentford. You now Everton without points deductions, Everton were above Brentford hmm. last season exactly. anyway. You know? Um so therefore, why not? Yeah. They've lost Ivan Tony, who was obviously really good for them. I know we missed half the season last season, but he was still an op a real option for them. He was really good for them. So we've got to be targeting this game on Saturday and um, hopefully we can get the three points. What do you think it is away from home? Is it just purely that they just can't score the goals that they do score at home? Because they have the goals, you know, as I said, the mad amount of games and score lines, scoring three, fours and fives at home. Do you think it's just not being able to trans? Like that to that to the away form, cause they are so free flowing, and because they do give people a chance, is that cause they simply haven't scored those goals? It's just left the door open far too many times away. Uh, yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you often, obviously, most teams win the majority of their points at home. Mm. The crowd, and you know, you know the pitch, and all of the other stuff that goes with it. And Brentford have been. You know, they haven't been battered, have they, in any game? I mean, the last three home games, what, they've had a 5-3, a 4-3 and a 3-2 or something, so they know where the net is, that's for sure. But 
But yeah, it, it, listen, it's slightly difficult, you know, different away from home and it's more difficult and it's being calmer in them moments. I don't know, maybe the calmer, maybe the crowd get them going, gives them an energy that they don't quite have away. Mm. But like I say, he did really well at Anfield as well. He had opportunities at Anfield. Liverpool beat them pretty bad. Some tricky away games and you can look at it and go, well, they haven't got any points, but they turned in some decent performances away. They just have been on the wrong mm. side of narrow narrow defeats. I think they might have lost three of the five, I think, three of the five by a single goal, something like that. So they're not getting blasted yeah. by teams. Um, they've always got carry a threat, but yeah, sometimes you look at it and go, why aren't we doing what we're doing at home? And it can be something. As in, a, in a league of small margins, it can be something it's like the crowd or, or momentum or confidence. Just feel more comfortable at home than away. Maybe. They've scored four goals away and conceded 11. Mm. And I think that's that that tells the, the tale, doesn't it, really? At home, they've scored 18 goals mm. and conceded 11. I think that right there tells you exact everything you need to, but, to they're know. Open. They're open and it's They're the best team in the league at home and they're in the bottom three away. Mm. Um and if you if they could get some some of that some balance or, or at least tune it to the away games, then who who knows? But you know, sixteen points at home they've picked up and one away. I mean that's that's that that's an that's an unbelievable swing, isn't it? And mm. That shows you though whether you look at the home um, goals they can see or they, they can see goals. Mm. And that's, that's that's what we've got to look at. And if we are timid on Saturday at home, which you should never be, mm. then <laughs> what's the point? Well, I watched them against Fulham. I watched the sort of like the last half an hour against Fulham. They were winning one nil, and Fulham had loads of momentum. But going into like the ninety third minute, they were still winning one nil. And sort of like mm. by the ninety eighth minute, it was out and Fulham had won. Yeah, and it was like, have you managed to lose that? And yeah, they had yeah. a chance to make it 2 0 just before Fulham equalised. So it's you've got to be you know, wary of them on the break, but they do give you opportunities because mm. they do. Thomas Frank, he, he does play it's, open. Yeah. It's risk and reward. But it's for mindset, them. though, isn't it? Then mm. for, the, for our manager, the mindset is these don't score many away. So if we keep it tight and nick it, or the, mi- or the mindset is these concede loads of goals away, let's have a go for it. Mm. And I think we know what, what, what side Sean Dice should be on. Mm. But you just mentioned it. It is that risk and reward that the risk and reward is they've they've lost as many games as we have, but yeah, a much better off in the table. Mm. And you know, have won. They're entertaining their fans at home, and I know it's hard to find that balance, and I know it's hard to keep everybody happy. And I I don't you know, but they've won five games at home, and and they're showing they're showing. Um, the difference that can make. Yeah, but it just shows you. I mean, Everton have won seven games of football since mid-December. Mm. Brentford have won five this season. Yeah. All at home. Yeah. So, by going for teams, mm. you can beat them. Listen, you can't play. I, I'm naive. You can't mm. fly at Liverpool and Man City no, and no. Arsenal because they, they'll just cut through you. But these are games where a team is open. If you are a little bit more front foot football and you get that at home, get on the front foot for most of your home games. You, mm. get, you do get rewarded with victories. There's an air of Thomas uh, of Thomas Frank and David Moyes when he was at Everton for some years that oh, being able to form. beat teams at home without yeah. a problem and then they go then going away mm. and, and not being in, not being anywhere near as good and mm. not quite being able to understand why that is. Um, I mean, obviously that's mm. for them to work out, but... I think they've got a real opportunity in this game for the team. You know, if any teams coming to Goodison Park with that kind of defensive record, you should be, you know, the centre forwards and the, the the attacking players, whether they can play number ten or not, um, should be should be licking the lips at this one. But you've got to look, you've got to look at it from our perspective and think, well, yes, if we sit back, then mm. and try to try to nick something off a set piece or something. Mm. You're giving the onus up to the opposition, and the opposition have sc- score yeah. goals. Yes, they concede in goals, yeah, but yeah. they score goals. But you don't affect the game to score you goals. Get at them. They're not, con- yeah. you know. And the other thing as well, we know this because Everton have not had. It's not like Everton have had amazing away records for the last mm. few years, because we haven't. Yeah. So the longer you go away and don't get results, the harder it becomes. So for Brentford, they've done their travel so far. There's no points. They've got 16 of the this season. Mm. They're all at home, so they haven't a single point away. So. It becomes a, a mental sort of block when you go away. It's like, and especially if you can get in front. If you're a team that doesn't really get anything away from home and you go behind, 
that mountain to climb seems even higher. It's like, here we go again, territory. Yeah. Because if they keep taking the lead, yeah. it's one game, they won't concede anything, yeah, yeah. and they will win the game. We're, so for us, for me, uh, we've got to we've got to get the first goal and see yeah. if we can pile it on them and, and make them doubt mm. themselves again. And that way, we can we can get a good result. Well, let's have a little look at the Brentford side that played last time out. So, you know, very much sort of like a 4-3-3. Um, they've got Van der Berg there, Collins, Pinnock, who's mm. available. And they played Lewis Potter in the back four last time as a left-back, which was a bit interesting. Yeah. Jensen, Norsgaard, Jan Elty have been really creative for them, and obviously the front three of Mbumo, Wissett, and uh, Michael Damsgaard, who's mm. got in now, yeah. having took a long time to settle, was very good. Uh, mm. in Euro 21 wasn't he yeah, he scored, yeah. I think he scored against England actually yeah, yeah. the semi whatever it was so they, they're very open very attacking uh, the fluid the front three are quite fluid mm. as well so you know we'll have our work cut out but I always think at home especially for Everton best form of defence is mm. attack yeah. and really put these under pressure get bodies around Calvert-Lewin mm. get in Jai high up the pitch get McNeil who's fit again mm. get him right up with Dom you know, whoever he goes for on the right, Lindstrom, who seems to be in favour now, mm. make sure he's high as well and, and put them on the back foot a little bit. And, you know, we've, we'd, I don't think the first three games, I think we played Brentford, we haven't beat them and, and Evan have won the last three against them. So starting to understand Thomas Frank's yeah. team, John Dyke, you know, the last three games, he's won them. So there's no reason why Everton can't go into this one and think we can beat these you know, we beat them when we needed to last season it was the game that sort of yeah. finished off a great six days yeah, wasn't yeah. it we, you know, we beat them 2-0 didn't we at home 1-0 or... one nil, one nil, sorry Ghana wasn't it haven't beat Forest you in were Liverpool. too busy in Florida yeah I mean, we won and Ghana at the street <laughs> end put it in the roof of the net so I know the goal um, I think Dwight hit the bar as well in that one so we've beat them before I think McNeil scored time before didn't he in the first 40 odd seconds to beat them so we know we can score goals past mm. them. It's just a mindset with us. Yeah. And if we can get this win, it'll put us in good stead going into what is going to be a really yeah. difficult month, which is December. Uh, we mentioned Brian Mbumo there. Mm. He's obviously their most talented player. Mm. Let's have a little look at his stats. So here we go. 11 Premier League games, eight goals from an XG of 3.88. He's had one assist and he's created five big chances and does a lot of his work on that right hand side mm. as a left footer. We know that just this week actually he's been linked with a move to Liverpool yeah. and Newcastle. So they're looking at him, Liverpool looking at him as a potential Mohamed Salah replacement yeah. to play over off that on the right hand side, cutting in on his left foot. So Evan have got to be, you know, Michalenko will obviously the uh, have his work cut out there because he is a really, really good player for Brentford. Yeah, he's, that, he's, you know, he's been excellent, hasn't he? And we know he's been excellent for the last few years, but mm. it just feels like without the shadow of Ivan Tony there, mm. that he's really come out and you know he's scoring goals, taking penalties as well, all that kind of so thing. Bet on him, haven't he? Yeah, do you, you know, know. Well, you know, mm. um, no, but he's, he mm. really, he really is a good yeah, player. Yeah, very good. You know, still only twenty five. Looks a lot older. It doesn't does he? Look like looks like he's been around for ages. Yeah. Um, no, he's done brilliantly for. No, he is. He's someone another that, success story for them. He's someone that we'll obviously. Um, well, yeah, be in, it'd be interesting to see how he gets on against. Real no, I'm just saying it'd be interesting to see how he gets on against our fullbacks. Uh, I was just having to see. No, if we go if it's if we're talking one v one. Michalenko's yeah, yeah. very good yeah. in a one v. He is though. That's no, he, he just he's, hasn't been this season. That's all. Still, no one else. I feel like when he's just got it. If you, the onus is just do not let the the winger mm. get in the game. Michalenko's good at it. The problem. That Mich Micho has is that when you need him at the other end to create. Just, I just feel like sometimes like he gets into areas where he blindsides the fullback, mm. and I'm I'm a little bit worried about that because I think that can Michalenko can have a ten when Michalenko's one on one with someone. Mm. I'm all, he's, it's generally all right, mm. no issue. No one skins him. Yeah. Uh, really, a couple of people have to shoot. Don't really. But it's the blind side mm. that I sometimes feel a little bit worried about Michalenko. Mm. Just that the old. Like, you know, it's... Same with Mbumo, though, what you do see from him is cutting in 
on the left foot. Mm. He, he very, he's, he's not one for really going on the outside. Mm. But I also is, think Michalenko's not also. But that's why it'd be important to have Brantwaite in there mm. as well. Mm. Brantwaite, I think Michalenko's a lot better playing when Brantwaite's in there. Mm. So, um, yeah. Well, they've got, listen, they've got threats. Jan mm. has had a great, he's had a really good yeah. season. Lewis Potter, who mm. plays high, or he can play, yeah. play them fullback last time, or, you know, a bit more defensive, but he's another one's quick and direct and did a good side. And yeah. but they're also, you know, they're also very beatable side. Mm. As no, no, five we clubs have shown we you know already. That. This we know year. that. Let's have a look at the Everton team that obviously played West Ham last time out and got a draw there. Mm. So, Can you yeah. see many changes from that side? Obviously, McNeil's available, so mm. the, that leaves a question mark over the core. Well, it's the, it'll be McNeil coming in the ten. I imagine. Mm. And then the question for the manager will be, does he go with Mangala or Decore? I think Garner will play. I think Idrissa will play. Yeah, he should do. He used, he's used Decore as as a central midfield player, of mm. course, at times. I actually think he's he's more effective in that role now than what he is in the, the 10. Yeah. Um, Dwight's far better in that 10, and Jai could well be far better in the yeah. 10 than Dwight, but Dwight's doing well there. Mm. Um, so it's whether or not it's Mangala or the Corey. Mangala's mm. done all right as well. See, I, so, I like Mangala mm. in there with Ghana because I, I do think it, it gives a nice little shield, and it almost says to those from four, you mm. you don't have to... And he just helps it keep the ticket yeah, over, Yeah, that's what I'm he? saying. The Corey obviously he does put himself around the pitch mm. but that's not always to the benefit so that when we played Fulham mm. so to being caught out trying to get around the pitch oh. rather than having someone because Garner obviously I'm all... not advocating the core I start no, well, I'd, 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 I'd feel like you were like, really I'd go, like with, I'd go with Mangala and Guy yeah. and just leave them, yeah, and them I'd leave them because I just feel like Mangala can just hold that position Garner can go out and press mm. whereas when the core is playing. The core he wants to go and do that, and suddenly you've both abandoned your job, and no one's sitting in it as a six. I think Mangal is a proper six that will just sit, and obviously Garner knows the job better than mm. anyone. And as I said, I just think that allows those three in front to be able to do what they want. And you know, Dwight McNeil, whether it's Dwight, Mc, well, it will be Dwight McNeil, but he can be on a lot more on the front foot, mm. and we're not asking him to defend as much, you know. And um, get it, get it out your feet, Dwight Nitty. That's literally, you know, like I said, mm. score the win in it. 40 odd seconds in that game at the park end last season he's hit one from about 25 in fact very similar to the goal he scored against Crystal Palace um, earlier in the season his first one he had the same sort of shot last season against Brentford which wrapped off the underside of the bar at the street end mm. of course and that's his real strength is being able to get shots away yeah. from there so you know that's what we want him doing on Saturday yeah, as well definitely. And put, you know, put them under pressure and of course we get if we were to win this game, it gives gives everyone a little bit of confidence, mm. doesn't it? Obviously, Manchester United the week after, which normally, you, well, not normally, but you would be looking at going, well, it's not. But obviously, with the new manager and everything, and then the the get. I mean, the next home games, Wolves. Mm. I mean, that's, that's another one we should be winning. You know, if, if Everton could win these two home games, the next two home games, then it it you know it, it gives you that boost in what is a difficult month. And then you can sort of, it's all right then trying to piece a couple of draws and together of if you can. The Derby will take care of And of, of course, this is, this is the period of time, isn't it? This These next couple of months are, that sets the agenda mm. for, for, the, rest of, for the, the rest of the season. You know, because it is so quick and you, you're in and out, you know, you're in and out of it so quickly mm. and points will, point, you know, you look at the, look, it looks terrible when you look at it, but just take one game by, by game and mm. we've had runs like these before and, We've got through them. We've picked up enough points. So, why not? Anyway, Big game. let us know really? your thoughts in the comments. Are you confident? What are you thinking for this one? You know, must win, obviously, with everything coming up. And, and must win anyway, because we've only got 10 points. And uh, some people are like, ah, 10 points, you're we've doing fine. One, no, no. We've won one game at all. No, we're not doing fine. We've got 10 points. We've got less points than we play games. That's never acceptable in my eyes, anyway, personally. Um... Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already and you want more great videos. Join us over on Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description and the QR codes come on the screen now. See you later.